Hi, Ashley here with hearthookhome.com, and today we're going to be working up a toddler size of my new Velvet Cardi crochet pattern. So we are working up the 2-3-T size today. This pattern starts at 18 to 24 months, and it goes up to adult 5XL. The child sizes are available for free on hearthookhome.com. The adult sizes are a paid pattern, but this video will help you with any of the sizes. All of them are constructed basically the same. The stitch counts are different. So let's go ahead and get started. We are using Burnett Velvet from Your Inspirations. This these skeins are huge. They're very dense and they're huge. We've got 315 yards. We're going to be using an I 5.5 millimeter hook. You're going to definitely want to check your gauge as with any crochet pattern. We are looking at a gauge of 11 half double crochet stitches and 9 rows in 4 inches. So let's go ahead and get started. I will say one thing about working with this velvet yarn. Um, I've made several of these cardigans now. I find that it's helpful to leave a longer tail than normal when you're um, switching a new skein or if you have to um, reattach your yarn for some reason. It's easier to weave in your ends if you have longer, longer tails. So we're going to weave in super well. This yarn is just so, so soft and so kind of not slippery, but it's just a little bit. Um, it's important that you just weave in your ends super well with this yarn. So I am going to start with... A foundation half double crochet row if you need a in-depth video for the foundation half double crochet which I highly recommend for this pattern that you use it for the first row um, I have a more in-depth video that I will link below the and you can learn how to do the foundation half double crochet um, in, in its entirety but we are going to start with this row one with the two three T size with a row one of 45 stitches. So right now I'm going to do a foundation half double crochet, which is where you make the first row as you crochet it. Part of the reason that we're using that for this pattern is because the stitches, because this is the velvet yarn, the stitches can be kind of hard to see, especially when you do a chain and you're working back through the chain. So I like to use foundation stitches whenever I can, but for in particular with fuzzy yarns or this velvet, it's a lot easier to see what you're doing than going back through chains. So I'm going to continue making these foundation half double crochets until I get 45 of them total. So if you're making a size other than the toddler size, you will want to follow your pattern and finish row one and we will start together working on the back. This cardigan is worked in vertical rows. So the first row that we're doing here is going to be the first row of the back of the cardigan. This is the bottom hem and this is going to be the neck. So we're going to be working back and forth in rows for the whole width of the back. I'm going to finish my 45 stitches here and we will hook back up. Here we are with 45 foundation half double crochet stitches. To start row two, all you're going to do is you're going to chain one and look at the bottom side of your foundation half double crochet row and just half double crochet in each stitch until you get to the end of the row. And so for rows two through your total back width, you're just going to do solid half double crochet rows. So for the 2, 3, T size, double check my, my pattern here, for my 2, 3, T size, I'm going to do 26 rows for the back. So I am just going to continue crocheting. Right now, I've got the width of 2 rows here, so I'm going to continue until I've got 26 rows. We're just making a rectangle at this point, just one large rectangle. I'm going to continue on. So I'm finishing up the 26th row of my toddler size of the Velvet Cardi. And when I get done with this last stitch here, we're going to count our rows because this velvet is kind of hard to count your rows. What I find most helpful is if you look at this side here, you can see these lines. Every one of those lines is two rows. So this first one down here, this is our foundation row that we did with our half double crochet. And then this is row two. 
So row two has this ridge here. So that means that this is four, and then this is six, this is eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, and then 22, 24, and 26. So it's easier if you use those ridges to your advantage to count your rows. So now that we have the entire back finished, we are ending, this is the bottom of our cardigan, and this is the top where our shoulders will be. So now since we're working in these rows vertically, we are ready to create our armhole here. So obviously the armhole is gonna be at the top of the cardigan, right? So for your next row, you are going to, for all of the child sizes, you're going to follow this exactly. For the adult sizes, we have to add a little bit of width under the arm. Um, so follow those shorter rows in the adult size and then continue on with the video. So for this toddler size, I am going to chain one and turn, and this is the first row of our underarm or the underarm. So I'm going to half double crochet in as many stitches as it states for my size, and this one is 33 stitches. So I'm gonna go into 33 only. Now that I've got these 33 stitches, I'm going to do a chain that's going to come up here and that's going to create our armhole right here. So for this size, I'm going to do a chain 13. I have noticed that when you do this chain here, since these velvet stitches are kind of hard to see, it does help if you go a little bit looser, not too loose that it looks sloppy, but just a little bit looser so that you can see what you're doing. So now for our next row, we're going to start coming back down the same where we, what we just did. So then we're going to create a front of our cardigan. So your arm's gonna come out here, this is the back, and then this is going to be the front, right? So your next row, what we're going to do next is you're going to skip the first chain from your hook. You're gonna do a half double crochet in that next chain. I like to go into the back bar. It's a little harder to see with this velvet, so you're just gonna to have to kind of feel your way through. If you wanna go through both sides of the V on the other side, that's totally fine. Just make sure that your stitch count at the end of this row is correct. So go through all of these chains with one half double crochet. And there's my last one there. So make sure that you have the correct number. Your chain, since we skipped the first one when we started this row, your chain, or this right here, your armhole area is going to be one stitch less than what we chained. So I chained 13, and since we went into that second chain, there should be 12 half double crochet stitches right here before you start going back into your regular piece of your back. So I've got my 12 half double crochets here. Now I'm just going to half double crochet in each stitch all the way to the end of this row. Okay, so now we are done with the first row of the front. So we've got our back here, we've got our armhole here. When we're finished, we're gonna fold this in and we're gonna sew up our shoulder. So just keep going for now. We want it to be a nice flat rectangle with an arm slit right here. So for your next few rows, we're going to bring the front out so that it covers half of the chest, right? So you are going to do for this size, I am going to do rows um, 29 through 32. So I just completed row 28 and now I'm going to do 29 through 32, same solid half double crochet rows back and forth and back and forth. 
Okay, now I have gone as many rows as stated for solid half double crochet rows for this size. So we're doing, we're still going to add a bit to the front, but we're going to create that sloped edging at the bottom. That's such a lovely effect. So find the next stitch that you will be working. We are going to start with row 33, right? Or the next row that you're gonna be working. We're gonna start with row 33 for the decreasing for the toddler size. So what we're creating here is we're going to give it a nice curved edge the rest of the way, and then it's just gonna go straight up. So the first row of your decreasing, you're gonna chain one and turn so that you're looking at the bottom side. You're going to do two of half double crochet two together. So you're gonna do a half double crochet two together in these two, and then you're gonna do a half double crochet together in these two. So you're gonna have two decreases right next to each other. And so you're gonna yarn over and you're gonna do that half double crochet decrease. I just go straight into that next stitch, yarn over, pull through all of them. Do the same thing for this next one. Lovely. And now you're just going to half double crochet all the way to the end of the row. Because we did those two decreases, our stitch count for this row is going to decrease by two stitches. So we started with 45 for the toddler size, and this row we're going to end up with 43. Now that we're done, for the next row we're going to half double crochet all the way back down to where we started. So your, your stitch count for the next row is going to be 43 as well if you're making the toddler size. So chain one and turn and do your half double crochet all the way down the row. These can kind of be hard to see where your decreases are. For me, I know that it's this one here and this one here. One of my testers found it helpful when she put a stitch marker in this one when she made it, that very first stitch of the row, so that she didn't keep going too far past. You could also count out the entire row, but this is my 43rd stitch, so this is the end. If you want to place a stitch marker there, it is helpful. So now we are going to do our next decrease row. We're going to chain one and turn, and we want all of our decreases to be just on this one bottom edge. We don't want any of them at the top. So now we're going to do two decreases again going up the row. The number of um, decrease rows that you have um, is, is different based on what size you're making. So definitely read the pattern. The basic gist for all sizes is the same. Just make sure that you're reading the pattern and following along with your size. So now I've done my two decreases here. If you want to, put a stitch marker in this one to make it easier to recognize on your way back down and just complete your half double crochets up the row. Then chain one, turn, and come back down right where we were, just like we just did. So I'll hook up with you here in just a little bit and we'll finish up this front. All right, I've made it all the way back down the front here and we are going to have one more row on the toddler size. Definitely read the pattern. The adult sizes at this portion are very, very minorly different, um, but you do wanna make sure you read for the size that you're making. So I'm doing two decreases here for my last row of this size going up. So see if we lay this flat like this. We've got this really pretty little edge here and we're going to make it more pronounced when we add the edging, but it's just a nice little curved edge there to give it just a little bit more of a pizzazz. So I'm going to do half double crochets all the way up to the end. And when I get to the end, we're going to fasten off because we're finished with the first front for this size. And we're going to start on the second side, the second front. So what's important to note um, here is that when we get to the top, when we fasten off, we're not going to weave in our ends. We're going to leave them. We're gonna leave them a little bit longer as well. Not only do we like to leave longer tails with this velvet yarn because it is kind of slippery, we need to use that tail to sew our shoulders together. So we are almost to the end here, and I'll show you how long to leave your tail. It's always better to leave it a little bit longer than a little bit you know, on the short side. You can always trim it, and it's not gonna make a difference really in your yardage but you need to have enough of that yarn to actually sew and, and then weave in your ends. So here I've made it all the way back up 
cute little thing. Oh, I just love it. So I'm going to pull about mm, not a not a ton of yarn, just just enough to where I can sew up the width of my shoulder here and then weave in my ends. So if you want to, good rule of thumb is to do several lengths of the, what you're about to sew itself. So here we've got three lengths of that yarn. I'm gonna add just a little bit more to it and I'm gonna snip it down here just to make sure that I've got enough to do what I need to do with it. So now that I've fastened off, I'm going to go ahead and pull it through Pull that nice and tight so it's not going anywhere. And now we're ready to start on the other front of our cardigan. So here we have the back and our armhole. So to start the next front, you're gonna flip it over like this so that what you're looking at has the front down here closest to you. And then your the top of your cardigan is over here on the left and you're going to insert your hook in the bottom, so right where you started, this is row one that we that we did earlier. We're going to insert our hook just in that bottom corner stitch, okay? And we are going to do our other front and it's exactly what we did on this side. So we are doing the exact same thing. We're gonna start here, we're gonna do our 33 stitches, then we're gonna do our chain and then we're gonna work our way back and back and back and back and then we're going to do the curved portion. So literally you are doing exactly what we just did but you're going to add it right here so that we have our armhole here and then an armhole here, right? So I'm going to pick up my yarn and leave a decent-ish tail to weave in. Always leave longer tails, especially with this yarn. I'm gonna beat you to death with it until, <laughs> until you leave longer tails, but definitely leave a little bit of a longer tail when you go to start um, this side. So I've attached with a slip stitch just to the bottom right corner here. Now I'm going to chain one. I'm going to go half double crochet in that same stitch where I joined, half double crochet. Now I'm going to do 33 total. This is partly why I like the foundation half double crochet. This is that stitch, that row that we're going into is that half double crochet foundation uh, row that we made. And it gives it a really nice edge. See how you can kind of see your V's? The velvet's so hard to see anyway. But you can see these V's and it makes this row that we're doing now just look a lot cleaner. So I'm going to go ahead and do my 33. So here's one, two, three, four, five, all the way to 33. Okay, I've made it my 33 stitches. So now I'm going to create my second armhole. And I'm just going to complete this front, the other front, exactly as I did the other one. And when I get done with that, we will fold the sides in, sew up the shoulders, and complete our little velvet cardies together. So go ahead and finish your other front, and we will hook up for construction and edging. We're almost there. Okay, so now I've finished my other front. I've got my two armholes here, and if you look at the bottom, both of my sides are nicely sloped, right? Looking nice. This is where I attached. This is my tail from row one and where I attached to do my second front. You can go ahead and weave in these ends, get them out of the way. Make sure you weave them in really well. So I would go up and then down again, up again, as much as you can. This yarn does tend to slip a little bit. Um, after you wear it for a little while. So to start the construction of our cardigan, we are going to fold both of our fronts in and line them up like this, right? Just like that. And now we are going to sew using the tails that we left from our fronts, we're gonna sew the shoulders shut. Now, do not weave in the ends when you get to the outsides here either, because once we add the sleeves to our cardigan, then this tail is gonna be over here at this corner and we can use that after we're done with the sleeve to make sure that we don't have any holes or anything up at the top of that sleeve. So do not weave in any ends. I'm a big, big uh, never weaver inner of ends <laughs> um, until the very end of your cardigan, except for these down here at the bottom. Of course, you can go ahead and weave those in, but I would not do it for these. Okay, so what we're going to do, you're gonna thread your yarn needle. I'm gonna zoom in here so we can sew this together. All right, what I like to do, I pull the front down like this and I pull the back folded over. And that way we can make sure that all of our 
stitches are lining up nicely as we sew back and forth. So you can see that this ridge here lines up with this one, this one's gonna go with this one, this one's gonna go with this one, that one's gonna go with that one, and this one is gonna start sewing right here. So it's easy to make sure that you know where you're going if you go ahead and line up those um, row ends for row end. So I'm gonna insert my needle here, and now I'm just gonna sew back and forth. I'm gonna use the mattress stitch, which is my favorite way of sewing crochet together. Pick it up just like you're tying a sh or you're lacing a shoe. Don't pull too tight or your whole seam will start to pull in and pucker like this. So we're just gonna sew back and forth. Not too tight, but you definitely don't want it loose. And I like to, to pull these and li line it up every once in a while to make sure that I'm still on track so that you don't have any wonkiness happening. See how that lines up nicely? It, it really helps to hide your seam as well, especially with this velvet yarn. But anytime I sew shoulders, just lining that up makes a huge difference in the outcome. And get to the end here. Make sure we do this one really nicely. When we do our sleeves here in a second, we're going to start at the bottom of the sleeve and work our way around the sleeve top. So these sewing these two together is pretty important to make sure that your sleeve turns out the correct orientation, not orientation, but the correct size. So that's another reason that I like to not weave into this end. So I'm just going to pull up both sides of this last stitch here. And then I'm just going to leave the end right where it is. So I'm going to pull my needle out. Now that I've sewn up this shoulder, I'm going to let that bad boy hang out over there. When I get done with my sleeve, I'm going to use it to weave in any holes or anything that I've got going on over there. So now I'm going to sew the second shoulder. Okay, for this sleeve, we've got our tail here that we're not cho we're choosing not to weave in yet. For our sleeve, we are going to insert our hook at the bottom of the armhole. So, just through the side of that stitch. We're going to leave a decent tail so we can weave it in at the end, and we're going to pull up a loop. Now, for the adult sizes, it's a little bit different. Just follow the pattern. The, the basic concept is the same. We are going to crochet around the armhole and join back to this first half double crochet that we're just about to make. For the kids' sizes, since there is not a big underarm portion here, we're just going to crochet evenly around the armhole. So however many stitches you have um, should be related to how many chains and stitches we had when we made our armholes earlier. So I'm going to hide my tail down here and I'm just going to crochet evenly around. For the toddler size, I should have 26 stitches when I get back to the first here. So here's my first one. I'm going to do two, three, four, five, six, seven, What is helpful when creating sleeves, I find, um, is that if you make sure when you get to the top here, 
to this stitch, this is your halfway point, point. So make sure, since I need 26 stitches for the total around, this is stitch 13, which is good because this is where my shoulder seam is. So I know that I'm on track because I'm halfway around. So it's helpful. If you need to break it out further into like quadrants, so you have six here and seven here, or you know, however many for the, the size that you're making, it does help. So I'm gonna continue my way around. 14. See how this left kind of a gap there? That's why we leave this because I'm going to pull that tight and it's going to look so much better. So do not weave in that end yet, okay? Do yourself a favor. Okay, so we've got 14, 15, I've got 25, and 26. I'm going to put right in the bottom there. So now I've got my 26 stitches. I'm going to join to the top of the first actual half double crochet that I've made here. So we're going to join. Beautiful. So now for the six rows total for this size, I'm going to do 26 stitches around for six rows. So I'm going to chain one and I'm going to turn so that I'm looking at the inside of the sleeve and I'm going to crochet 26 times around and I'm going to do this for six rows. Join to the top and start your next row chain one, turn so you're looking at the outside again. So your odd numbered rows are always going to be when you're looking at the outside of the cardigan and your even number rows are always going to be when you're crocheting on the inside of your sleeve or when you're looking at the inside of your sleeve. So this that's a good way to tell what row you're on if you need to count. Okay, for the toddler size, the first decrease that you're going to do, let's take a look at our sleeve real quick before we move on. Like how cute that is, cute little thing. Okay, for our first row of decreasing on the toddler size, you're always going to decrease on the odd numbered rows, okay? So our first one, this is row seven of the toddler size. So our first decrease is going to be on the first two stitches. So this is where we joined. I'm not gonna go into that one. I'm gonna do a half double crochet two together using these two stitches. So I've already chained my one to start this row. So I'm gonna do a half double crochet two together right in that first two, in those first two stitches. So now I'm going to crochet the rest of the row and I should end up with 25 this time since I decreased by one. So I'm going to go around the row. 25, so that turned out lovely. I'm going to join to the top of the, that decrease right there. So I'm going to join using the top of that half double crochet two together. So that is my row seven. Now your even number is going to be a solid row. So I'm going to just crochet 25 stitches around, join to the top of the first stitch, chain one and turn. Now we're going to do a decrease again, but instead of doing it in the first two stitches here, because our seam is going straight up the center here, we're going to offset our decreases so that our seam doesn't start going all, all wonky one direction or another. So we've got our decrease right here that we did in row seven. Now in row nine, we're gonna put our decrease in the last two stitches of that row. So I'm gonna go ahead and start half double crocheting all the way around. When I get to these last two stitches, we're gonna do a decrease on this side of the seam. So I'm gonna to count to 23. Okay, so now I've got 23, which means that I've got two open stitches left. So I'm gonna do a decrease in these two to make this row 24. Last row was 25, we're decreasing by one to make this 24. So I'm just gonna decrease in these last two places here. You're using these last two places and then join to the top of the first half double crochet. Now start with row 10, just an even row. So we're just gonna do half double crochet all the way around, no decreases, no nothing. Now we are at another decrease row. So instead, since we put the decrease on this side of the seam last time, now we're going to do it at the first two. So it's on this side of the seam. So we've got this one here 
this one here and now we're gonna have this one here and then the next one we're gonna put on the other side and then we're gonna blah, 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 and back and forth and back and forth it just keeps things nice and clean without migrating your seam so here we are at the end of my sleeve cute little sleeve looking good we are ready to do the edging and the edging is the most difficult part of this pattern it's the part that my testers had the most trouble with is understanding where to place our stitches so we are going to do this super, super slowly together and make sure that we all understand exactly what we're doing. So this is the, obviously the sleeve cuff that we're doing first. To start, your edging on the children's sizes is going to be six stitches wide. So we're going to start with a chain of seven. And now we're going to single crochet instead of the half double we're going to do single crochets in the second chain from the hook and in each chain until you get back to the sleeve so this is two this will be three this one's four I should have done it a little bit looser there those chains are hard to get into okay there's four this one is five and then we've got six right here okay so we start with our chain of seven single crochet in the second chain from the hook and all of the rest till you get back to the sleeve here what you're going to want to make sure you're doing see how it comes out of this stitch here you want to kind of pull your edging to where it lines up with the sleeve itself and you're going to slip stitch to the next open stitch so the next open stitch here is going to be this one so i'm going to slip stitch so that my edging lines up nicely right there okay now in order to start the next row since this edging is nice and sticking out just like this for the cuff we're going to put our second row on top of this row but we need to start it a little bit over so we're going to slip stitch again into this stitch right here the next open stitch so slip stitch into that one and now we're ready to start another row going back away from the sleeve so you're not going to want to go into these first two because these are slip stitches this is your first actual stitch on your um, edging so what I like to do or what I find to be most helpful is while I'm making these slip stitches I'll kind of just make sure I hold this one or keep this stitch in mind and so that I insert my hook directly into that make your first single crochet no chain no chaining or nothing make your first single crochet in the back loop only and now we're going into the back loop only of the rest to the end so two three four and five when you get to the last one your sixth one you're going to go through both sides of that stitch so there's your sixth stitch now we're going to chain one and turn we're going to go back towards the arm again so you're going to go in the back loop only of one two three four five and sometimes that's the sixth one it's kind of hard to get into but you just have to kind of root around for it so now I've got my six stitches back on my edging I'm gonna go and slip stitch to the next open stitch what's been a common issue with my testers is that they've slip stitched into the same stitch here as we just came out of to start this row so you want to make sure you're slip stitching all the way over here into this one so just be very very clear on where you came out of for this row and where you're going into for your next one so here's what we slip stitch to before right see this where my finger is now we're going to slip stitch to this one right here so we're going to slip stitch here and that's just going to connect that row to the sleeve now we're going to slip stitch into the next open stitch to start our next row going away from the body 
Okay, so there's our two slip stitches. That means that my first stitch is this one right here, and I'm going to go into the back loop only, so I'm just gonna kinda stick my hook in there. And now I'm gonna turn, no chaining, no nothing, and I'm just gonna single crochet in the back loop only all the way to the end of this row. Five. When I get to the end, I'm going to go through both sides of that stitch. You don't have to. I just think it looks cleaner in the long run when you're finished. So I do go into both loops of the last stitch there. See how we're starting to get a little bit of this ribbing? Looking awesome. Chain one, turn. We're going to go into the back loop only and continue all the way around the sleeve. When we get to the end here, we're going to sew it end for end, and then we'll be done with that cuff. I'll meet you up when we're there. Okay, now that I've made it all the way back to the beginning of my cuff here, I don't really have any more slip stitches to go into on the sleeve itself. So I'm going to fasten off and I'm gonna leave a long enough tail to where I can sew these together and then weave in that end. So I'm going to pull my yarn through, just like normal, just fastening off. And now I'm gonna thread my yarn needle and I'm gonna sew stitch for stitch. And then once that's done, you're going to weave in your ends nice and securely. I might just go up to the end here and then I'll leave the actual super securing of the ends for a later date <laughs> or a later time. I really do just weave in back and forth and back and forth. Maybe push it up into the sleeve a little bit and weave it in up in here too, just because this velvet is a little bit more slippery than we're used to. All right, guys, now that we have finished our sleeves, we've got some adorable looking sleeves. Looks great, awesome. The only thing we have left to do is the inside edging up around the neck and down the other side around the curved portion and then around the entire bottom. So literally the entire inside opening, we need to put um, an edging on just like we did on the sleeves. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the outside of the cardigan. So here's the inside, here's the outside, and the back. And we're going to attach our, our yarn along the flat portion here. Okay, so we're gonna just attach our hook anywhere in this flat portion here. I'm gonna pull up a loop, and I'm gonna leave my, my working yarn a little bit longer, like we said, so that we can really thoroughly weave it in. And I'm just gonna pull up a loop here. Let's zoom in just a little bit. So you can see what we're doing. So to start your edging on the flat portion, you're going to chain seven. The adult sizes are different, so follow the pattern that you're making. Now we're going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook, and I like to go into this back bar. Single crochet in each of the chains until you get to back to the beginning. Okay, now I've got my six single crochets. Now what we're going to do is we're attaching as we go. So if you take a look here at your cardigan, we're going to take our, let me move my working yarn down, let's get situated so I can show you exactly what we're doing. Okay, so we've got our edging that we're attaching, and we're gonna attach this around the entire piece, right? So you wanna have, remember how earlier when we counted these rows, one ridge is one row, and then the next ridge is two rows? So each 
section right here is two rows. So we've got two, 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 etc. You want to have one row of edging per one row of body on your cardigan. So where we attached here, we attached right below one of the ridges. So now we're going to slip stitch to the body in a corresponding place. So you're going to slip stitch to the middle of that next row. And that's where the height comes in of your, of your row. So now we've slip stitched to that row there and we are finished with this first row. Now in order to start the next row, we need to add get the height needed to start our next single crochet row. So what we're going to do is we're going to slip stitch to the same place right here. We went here to attach and now we're going to slip stitch here. So you're trying to remain as consistent as possible. So slip stitch there. So we've slip stitch once. This is technically slip stitching twice in between the rows, okay? So now you've got the height needed to come back out away from the body. So we're going to go into the back loop only. And sometimes I've noticed that it helps, especially with this uh, velvet yarn because it's so um, fuzzy and hard to see the stitches. Sometimes I've noticed that it helps if you count from the outside and count six because our edging is six stitches wide. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So this stitch right here is the one that we're going to start with. And we're going to go only in the back loop. So only in the back loop of that stitch. We're going to make sure that our turning, well, we didn't chain, but we're going to make sure that where we turned, it's not super loose right there. You don't want to pull it too tight, but you don't want it loose either. So we're just going to single crochet all the way down the row in the back loop only. When you get to the very last one, in this case, the sixth stitch, we're going to go through both sides of the V because I just like the way that it looks. I think it keeps it a little cleaner. So now we've completed our row away from the body. So now we need to do a row towards the body. So chain one. We're going to look at this side. We're going to do back loop only for six stitches. So all the way back to the body. Back loop only. We've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. Sometimes that sixth one is a little bit hard to see. If you just kind of root your hook around a little bit there, you'll finally, you'll grab it. It's kind of hard to see though, so that's normal. So finish your sixth crochet, single crochet, in that back loop. And now we are ready to attach again, right? So we've attached, we started here, we slip stitched to the center here, and then we went up to start this row. So now we've created this row coming back and we need to slip stitch to the center right here. So we're just doing one row here to one row here. So one to one, one to one, one to one to keep it nice and even. So now we're going to slip stitch right in the center of here. Now one thing that I wanted to make sure to point out is that when we're doing around this curved portion here, think of it as hmm, a, a circle. So this part of the curved section here, we want these space in between these rows to be smaller so that the outside gets bigger and it goes all the way around without puckering or, or being funkily um, shaped, right? So when you get to this curved portion, for, for the majority of the body where we've got a flat edge and we're doing the one-to-one, -one, it's fine. We don't need to worry about it. We're doing two slip stitches in between, so one to connect and then one to start the new row to get that height needed to go out. When we get to this portion here that is curved, we're only slip stitching one time in between these rows because we want the outside of the rows to grow while the inside of the rows do not grow if that makes sense. So instead of, when you get to this rounded portion here, instead of doing two slip stitches in between to get the height needed for that row, you're not, you're just gonna do one slip stitch. So I've reached almost the, the curved portion here. My first decrease looks like it's way up here. So I'm gonna do a couple more rows and attach here. And then when I get to here where it starts doing the curved portion, then I'm only gonna do one slip stitch in between those rows. 
and that's just to let the outside grow faster than the inside so that it's not all puckered up uh, looking funky on your edging. So now I'm going to slip stitch to the top of that next stitch and this is where I've been slip stitching all along so far, right? Keep it nice and even. There's our first one, there's that one, and now here's this one. So we're keeping them very consistent with our placement of our slips. So now we're going to find the sixth stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is the one right here that we're going to do back loop only. And we're just going to do one, two, three, four, five, and both loops on the last one going away from the body. So chain one, turn, and now we're going to do back loop only all the way back to the body. And that sixth one can be tricky. So now we've made it back, we're going to slip stitch right here, keeping it consistent as possible. Let's slip stitch to this one. So this is our second slip stitch since we're still on the flat portion. And now we're gonna do our crochet back away from the body. Both loops on the last one. Now we're gonna chain one and we're gonna go back toward the body again. So now we've reached this curved portion here. Now I'm just going to do one slip stitch in between. So I'm just going to attach that row that I just completed. I'm gonna slip stitch it here. And now instead of slip stitching again to get that height needed, I'm gonna go straight into that first one. We're gonna turn and go ahead and start doing our six stitches. Turn, we're gonna go back toward the body now. That sixth one's a beast. Okay, now we've made our way back. Since we're on this curved portion, we're only gonna slip stitch one time. Also on this curved portion, it's a little tricky to get your uh, hook in some of these stitches. When you do your slip stitch here, you wanna make sure, and I went right into the center of that decrease, didn't I? You wanna make sure that wherever you slip stitch, you're not leaving like a huge gaping hole, right? So if I were to slip stitch in the middle of, let's say this one, when I'm done with my edging, I don't wanna have this humongous hole right here. So when I slip stitch there, I'm gonna to try to grab another piece of another part of the yarn just to not have such a gaping hole, if that makes sense. So now I'm making my way back out. Chain one, and now we're gonna make our way back toward the body. Since we're on the curved portion, we're only going to slip stitch one time, so I'm gonna go in here and do a slip stitch. And I'm gonna make sure that my hole is not huge. Kinda helps if you kinda pull it apart there. I'm gonna go away from the body now. Both loops on that outside stitch, chain one. Now back loop only. We're still on the curved portion, so I'm only slipping once. Chain one, go back to the body. Still on the curved portion, believe it or not. So we're gonna slip stitch that and continue. When I get past this curved portion, we're gonna lay it out flat and I'll show you what I mean about only having one slip stitch in between because it really allows that outside to fan 
while not growing on the inside. It makes a huge difference. You don't want rippling or curling of your edging there. So it makes a big difference. Okay, so here we are back to where we started. Slip stitch one time. We've still got a little bit of the curve to go. Now you see how this outside is curving, right? So it's gonna continue to curve like this and then when we start doing it straight again, once we get to these straight portion, the straight rows, or st stitches, then it's gonna pull this way here and it's gonna be nice curved edging all the way around. So I've already done my slip stitch. Let's continue making our edging rows. I'm gonna go slip stitch. Mm. See if I go into this one right here where that decrease is, it's probably gonna leave a, a good size hole there. So I'm not gonna slip stitch there. I'm gonna find a place that's part of the half of the stitch there. See how where I slip stitched that, it's a lot tighter and there's not gonna be a gaping hole there now. So we're still on the curved portion. So now I've only done one slip stitch. We're almost past that pesky curve. And when you get around to the other side, you're going to have to do that to the same other front. Other than that, easy peasy, right? Okay, so I'm going to slip stitch to right here. I'm going to do a, one or two more rows of just one slip stitch to get past that curved portion. Okay, so now that I've made it around the curve, let's zoom out a little bit. So now that I've made it around the curve, can you see how where we did our um, one slip stitches in this area here, this part continued to grow and this part did not, right? Now, since we've made it to the flat portion here, I'm going to slip stitch to that stitch, the next open stitch. Okay, now that attached my edging to the body itself. Now, since we've reached the flat portion again, right, this is going up the inside of the cardigan, I'm going to slip stitch to the next open stitch to get the height needed for the row. So once you're on the flat portions again, you only do, or you do, do two slip stitches in between your rows. It's only on the curved portions that you only do one slip stitch in between. So now let's make it going back toward the cardigan. Another thing is to make sure that your slip stitches aren't too incredibly tight. You don't want them super loose to where the edging pulls away from the body, but you don't want it super tight to where it causes it to pucker as well. So, all right, we've made our way back now. I'm gonna slip stitch to the, this stitch right here is what we just came out of. So now I'm gonna slip stitch to this one right here to attach that row, slip stitch. And now to start the next row, Take a good look at where your stitches are placed. So sometimes I find that it's easier to look at the posts of the stitches. So I've look, I know that I've slip stitched to this one right here, and my next slip stitch is gonna be on the side of this one, right? So I went into this one here, I'm gonna go into this one next. And that's it. That's all we're going to do for the edging around this entire cardigan. So we've made it around our curved edge. Now we're just going to continue. Let me pull my yarn out a little bit so I can show you. So now we've gotten our edging and we're going up the inside here. We're gonna continue all, all the way up around the neck. When we get to the neck area, don't worry about doing one slip stitch. Just continue just as we have been for this flat portion where you do two slip stitches in between the rows and you go all the way around. When you get back to the end, you're going to end right here and you're going to sew it up just like we did for the sleeve cuff. And that's it. We are done with our velvet cardi. I hope you love this pattern. I'll share a finished photo of it here in just a second. I love it so much and thank you for watching. I look forward to crocheting with you more soon.